Welcome to lecture 5.1. What is a Laplace transform? Okay, so before I define Laplace transforms, let me give you an overview as to what they are and why they're useful. So they are used primarily as a tool to solve and analyze certain differential equations. Now they can help us solve a lot of equations that we've seen, although it actually might be a little more work to use Laplace transforms, but their value is that they can be used to solve equations that we can't solve so far, especially when the forcing term is discontinuous. So for example, so suppose we have an equation y double prime, so simple harmonic motion, and we have a forcing term f of t. Maybe this is an electrical system, so the forcing term is some sort of, maybe it's a square wave, something like this. So if this is discontinuous, so these vertical lines you know, really aren't there, then we can't use our calculus tools to, to solve this equation. But there really should be a solution. There should be some sort of, you know, th this is a mass spring system. When you have some impulse term that, that is discontinuous, there should be a solution to y of t. I mean, that, that function will exist. It's probably not going to be continuous, but we should be able to find it. And that's what Laplace transforms can be used to do. So here's sort of the big idea as to as to how we use Laplace transforms to solve these ODEs. So we, we start out with an ODE over here. And what we would like to do is we would like to get to the solution of the ODE, solution to the ODE. But we don't know how to do it directly, especially if we have discontinuous forcing terms like this. So we apply the Laplace transform, and what the what a word transform means is you think of it like a function of functions. So think of it as this black box that you input a function into and it spits out another function. And when you apply the Laplace transform to a differential equation, what you actually get is you get an algebraic equation. Something from like eighth or ninth grade, algebraic equation. Something that you can really easily solve. So what you do is you take this simple algebra equation and you solve it and you get the solution to the algebraic equation. And then you do the Laplace transform in reverse. You say, what function gave me this algebraic equation? And we call that the inverse Laplace transform. So we'll show you how to do the Laplace transform you know how to do this, that's just 8th or ninth grade algebra, and then we'll show you how to do a Laplace transform, and then what you get is the solution to the original differential equation. So we cannot compute the Laplace tra transform just of any function, we have to have a few restrictions. So let's suppose we have a function f of t, time, or it's typically a function of time, t, and time is assumed to say start at zero and then go onward, so we don't really care if the function is defined for negative t, but, or even for actually t time equals zero, but the function has to be defined for all positive t. And it also cannot grow too fast. So um, it can't grow, I'm not going to go over the details of this, but it, it can't grow any faster than an exponential function. So this, the absolute value of this has to be bounded by some exponential function for some constant c and some constant a. So for example, um, like the function t squared times e to the t, that, that's going to be too big for a Laplace transform. Okay, so the, the, the Laplace transform of f is the, is the following function. Think of the Laplace transform as like a function of functions. So you input f of t, and then you, you apply the Laplace transform, and you output some function capital, S, or capital F of a variable s. And typically we think of this as time, and we think of this as frequency. So the Laplace transform, it inputs a function f of t, and it, the output is this function of little s, which this is the definition, is the integral of from 0 to infinity of our function times e to the minus s t. And so we frequently call this capital F of s, something like this. Okay, so let's do an example. Compute the Laplace transform of the following function. So let's, let's do it. So the Laplace transform is capital F of S. And we'll talk more about why this is frequency um, in later lectures. So this is, let's just use the definition. So we plug in 
So this is f of t. We have to plug this into the integral. e to the a t. And we have to multiply by this e to the minus s t dt. And that's the Laplace transform right there. So we, we are going to be integrating out t. So at the end of the day, um, we're going to be left with, with s. And that's going to be the variable of the output function. I know it's a little bit weird to think about. Like, for, for me, it took a while just to get used to the fact that this thing is, is a function of s and then the t goes away. But bear with me. I think the more you, you see this and the more you, you do this, especially when you practice, you're going to get more and more used to it, and then it'll become second nature. There's a lot of other things in math that probably were weird at first for you, and over time it just became natural. Okay, so let's, let's uh, simplify this. So I'm going to use the laws of exponents to write this as e to the minus s minus a t. And... Oh, you know what I should say? I should probably remind you what, what the indefinite integral is because you, know, you can't just plug in infinity into an integral. So I should probably say that, that this is the, the limit as t goes to infinity. You should remember this from calculus of the integral. Actually, I probably shouldn't say t. I should probably say capital T of the integral from 0 to capital T of f of t e to the minus s t dt. So that's what the indefinite integral actually is, and sometimes this limit does not exist. So for, you know, for example, if, if you have a function like this, this is, this is t, then it, it does not make sense to integrate, you know, to find the area under the curve of here, because that, that limit is not going to exist, it's, it's going to be infinite. Whereas if you have another function, something like, something like this, depending on the function, Sometimes this limit does exist, and when it does, it equals the area under the curve. Okay, so let's, let's go back to, to this. Um, so this, this is e to, the, e to the negative s minus a times t over minus s minus a. And I'm going to slightly abuse notation and say from 0 to infinity, where it's implied that by plugging in infinity, I mean taking the limit. So this, this is just the limit as the limit as t goes to infinity of e to the minus s minus a times t over minus s minus a. So this is what you get when you plug in infinity. And when you plug in 0, you have to subtract off. So let's plug in 0 into here. That's e to the 0, that's 1 over um, negative s minus a. So that's minus 1 over s minus, sorry, negative s minus a. Let's make that plus and plus. Okay, so, so what can we say? So when does this limit exist? I should say the limit of, of this. So this limit is going to exist precisely when this whole exponent is negative. So minus, so this whole thing here has to be negative in order for this, this must be negative. Otherwise, and, and when, it, when it is negative, this limit is going to be equal to zero. You know, plug in infinity into capital T here, and we get zero. Otherwise, the limit is going to blow up. So we'll say that the Laplace transform is 0 if s is greater than a. And it does not exist. I'm tempted to put infinity. I wanted to say it does not exist if um, s is, is less than or equal to a. So... This question says, find the Laplace transform of this function. So we conclude by saying Laplace transform of e to the a t is 1 over s minus a, for, but if s is greater than a. So the domain is actually restricted. Let me show you what I mean by that. So 
for the input function um, e to the e to the at that's defined so that this is t and this is f of t e to the at is is defined everywhere. However, for the output function if this is s and this is f of s then this function is not defined. So the domain of this function is, is the whole real line. The domain of this function is, is uh, just s greater than a. So the domain is restricted. It's, it's, only, it's only valid in this range. Okay, so let's do a second example. Let's find the Laplace transform of f of t equals t. Before we do this, I want to recall integration by parts. So recall be a C, call integration by parts. Now this is something that you probably saw, I'm sure you saw in, in standard calculus, and you probably saw a derivation or proof as well, and that's something that you, you likely don't remember, and at the time it was probably intimidating just to see the word proof, but it's actually not that bad, and so I actually want to rederive it for you. So let's, so how does it go? U times V, so if you ever forget it, then this is something you can do to easily recover it. So it's basically just the product rule. U times V, take the derivative of that, and you get U times dV plus dU times, times V. And so I'm, by dU and dV, I just mean the derivative. Okay, so now let's, so integration by parts, what you do is, is you solve for this. So you say that u dv equals uv prime minus v times du. All right, and then you just integrate. You say, well, let's integrate that, let's integrate that, let's integrate that, and you get your integration by parts formula. You get Integral of u dv equals u times v minus v times du. So now you'll never forget integration by parts again, right? Well, hopefully. Okay, so let's continue this example. So the Laplace transform of, by definition, we integrate from 0 to infinity our function times e to the minus s t dt. So let's use integration by parts. Um, remember that anytime you have a polynomial, that should be our u, because that, the derivative of that is going to go to 1. So let's let, um, let's let u be equal to t, and du equals dt, and then um, d v equals e to the minus st, and v equals negative 1 over s e to the minus st, okay? Oh, I should put a dt there. Okay, so this integral is going to be, um, so let's, let's write this as, that's u, and this is dv. And so this integral is u times v, so that's negative 1s, or sorry, 1 over s, times t, times e to the minus st. This is u times v, minus integral of v du. So let's think, so v, that's this times du, so we're going to have minus a negative thing, so let's, um, well, Minus, sure, I'll, I'll do that later, um, negative 1 over s, e to the minus st, times d, dt. So this, of course, is, this is the last time I'll actually draw this out, u times v, and this is v du. So let's make, let's make both of these things, make, make this plus positive. And so now we have, okay, let's, let's see, this is negative t, this first term, let me simplify it, negative t 
e to the minus st, there's actually not much to simplify, over s. And then the second term, so, the so now this is an integral we can do. It's just an exponential. So let's divide. So that's going to be 1 over, over s squared times e to the minus s t. Okay, so that's, and since we're going to be, this is going to be a definite integral, we don't need to put a c in there. So this is the, this is the definite integral. Now we have to plug in our limits. So f of, f of s. Ooh, I just realized up, up here I said f, f of t. I should say f of s. Sorry about that. f of s is the limit as t is Actually, let's make that a capital T, as capital T goes to infinity of this creature that I, I boxed in blue. So that's minus T e to the minus S T over S minus to e to the minus S T over S. And let's do that from 0 to, to big T. So to this day, I still think of plugging in infinity. Um, but I, I should write out, especially because this is going to be immortalized on YouTube, I should probably make it be a little more formal and write this as the limit. So plug in infinity into here, you get zero, right? And then plug in infinity into here, and you, um, and you, you get zero as well. Plug, so plug in zero into here, and you get zero. Because, um, because um, again, remember, we're plugging in for, for t, for little t. So let's see. So you plug in infinity and you get, ah, I, I should be a little more, let's be a little more formal. So this, this is the limit as big T goes to zero of negative capital T e to the minus s capital T over s minus e to the minus s big T over s squared. Oh, I forgot my s squared on the left. Sorry about that. And then minus, let's just plug in. So this is what you get when you plug in and value it at big T. When you value it at zero, plugging in zero into here gets you zero, because there's a zero T right there. Plugging in zero into here gets you minus one over s squared. So this is zero minus. 1 over s squared. So this thing, this is 0, that is 0, and so this thing evaluates to positive 1 over s squared. So the Laplace transform of f of t equals t is f of s equals 1 over s, sorry, s, and there's the 2, s squared. So here are some other common functions and their Laplace transforms. None of these are too difficult to derive, although they are quite messy. So Laplace transforms are a lot like integrals where um, some of the basic ones you don't do by hand every time, you just use a table. And so most engineering books are gonna have a table in the back of Laplace transforms of common functions, just like how calculus books have tables of integrals of common functions. So in addition to some common functions, it's also very helpful to, as I said in the beginning, use Laplace transforms to solve differential equations where your functions are not necessarily continuous. They might be piecewise continuous or piecewise differentiable. For example, here's a, here's a step function. I'm just drawing a sketch in this. Um, and some people like to draw the, the vertical lines, so they really aren't there. So th th this, is a, this is a step function. And so we say that this is piecewise continuous. So it's continuous, and then, um, so this is not continuous, but then there, there are um, continuous functions that just are not differentiable, so we can't use calculus. So something like this, this, this is a triangle wave. Actually, let me, let me switch to blue. This is a triangle wave. And this thing is piecewise. It's, it's continuous, but it's, well, I mean, now I'm assuming 
I guess I haven't told you what it is outside of this, so you either assume it's zero out of this or that it's periodic. Um, but anyways, this is piecewise differential. So we will see shortly how to, well, actually, we know how to compute the Laplace transform of functions like this. We just do it piece by piece, although we will see some shortcuts in later lectures. Okay, so let's start with an example. Here's a piecewise function. It's helpful to, you don't have to, but it, I always like to sketch what this thing looks like. So if, if this is t, it's t axis, and then this function is, let's see, it is 1 from 0 to 1, and it's 0 otherwise. Now, it doesn't really matter if so in this case, th this is greater than or equal to, and this is less than. So it actually takes on the value of, of so this is, sometimes we draw this as an open dot, or sorry, this as a closed dot, and this is an open dot to signify that at 1, it takes the value of 0. It doesn't matter for the Laplace transform. That does not affect the area under the curve, whether or not this point is, is 0 or whether it's, it's 1. Okay, so let's, let's sketch this function. Here it is. I think we've, here's f of t. So to compute the Laplace transform in this, we have to break this up into two steps. Although, actually, we could do a little bit better than that. So the Laplace transform, let's call it capital F of S. This is the, this is the integral from 0 to infinity of my function F of t times e to the minus s t. So normally, if it's piecewise or even piecewise differentiable, we have to break it up into pieces. Integrate this part, then integrate this part. So this part is zero. So we can really ignore that because we know it's going to be zero. So we can write this instead as just the integral from zero to one of f of t, which is one times e to the minus s t dt. So let's compute this integral. This is minus one over s times e to the minus s t, zero to one. And if you plug in Let's see, so if you plug in 1 into here, you get, it's got to be careful, it's really easy to make mistakes with this. So it's 1 over s times e to the minus s, then minus, let's see, so that's minus um, negative 1 over s times 1. So let's simplify this slightly as negative e to the minus s. Um, over s plus 1 over s. And if you want to write that, you don't have to. If you want to write that as 1 to minus e to the minus s, you're more than welcome to. So that is the Laplace transform of this piecewise function. And you'll start to notice that when you have piecewise functions, you're going to, we'll see this more soon, you're, you're going to see factors of e to the minus s or e to the minus k times s start appearing. Okay, so let's do one last example. So here's a piecewise function. Let's sketch it to see what it looks like. So if this, this is t, then this function on, on 0 to 1 is just the function y equals x, or f of t equals t, and then it levels off and becomes 1. So this is actually a continuous function. And notice that it's not defined left of 0. It doesn't have to be defined. It just has to be defined from 0 to infinity. OK. so. Uh, let's compute the Laplace transform of this function f of t. So, cap, so capital F of s, it's the integral from 0 to infinity of our function times e to the minus s t dt. So here we have to divide it into two pieces, this piece and this piece, because we have a corner and we can't integrate over that corner. So we have to write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of my function in this on this interval, it's equal to t times e to the minus st, because 0 to 1, the function is t, dt. And then we have to go from 1 to infinity. And on this interval, half interval, the function is 1. So it's 1 times e to the minus st, dt. OK, so this first integral. We actually did this a couple of slides ago, so I'm not going to redo the, the, the indefinite integral. It's, remember, it's integration by parts. But uh, So I'll just tell you what we got a couple slides ago. So it, this indefinite integral is e to the minus st times 
t over s minus e to the minus st over s squared. So we have to evaluate this, this guy from 0 to 1, and then this the second integral, this is just this one we can do in our head, it's um, negative 1 over s e to the minus st from 1 to infinity. Okay, so let's let's do this first one. Let's when we plug in when we plug in one. First of all, I, I'm going to pull out the the negative sign and I'm going to make this plus and positive because when you have too many negatives outside, it just gets it's it's tricky. So I'm going to put a negative sign out here. And this first term, when I plug in one into here and here, I plug in one, I get e to the minus s over s. That's the first term plus e to the minus s over s squared. So that this is this thing is this thing above evaluated at 1. And then let's evaluate it at 0. Plugging 0 into here kills this because there's a t there. Plugging 0 into here, so this is minus um, e to the 0 is 1 over s squared. So that's, that should be a 1 over s squared. Okay, so that's this first term. And now let's let's do the same thing over here. So when we I'm gonna step back and say, okay, we're gonna plug in infinity. Plug in infinity, you know what I mean? Taking a limit, this thing goes to zero. So we so we get zero minus when you plug in one, now you get minus one over s times e to the minus s. And I make this plus positive right away. Okay, so collecting, let's see, so so what do we have here? So we have a minus e to the minus s over s. Um, we have a minus e to the minus s over s squared. We have, this is minus negative, so we have a positive 1 over s squared. And then we have this term over here, which is a 1 or plus 1 over s e to the minus s. Something here is going to cancel. What is it? Um, there we go. That is going to cancel with that. And we are left with 1 over s squared minus e to the minus s over s squared. I like to break these up in, um, in individual pieces for reasons that we'll see shortly. It makes it easier when computing the Laplace transform. Some people, of course, like to write this as 1 minus e to the minus s over s squared. Either one of these is fine. This is the, in, sorry, not the inverse, this is the Laplace transform of this piecewise function.